Hi. Folks are jumping on. Please introduce yourself in the chat. Welcome everyone today. Watch everybody come in. Okay. Well, you guys registered today. Very exciting. All right, I'm going to give folks just another few seconds just to join on. And then we'll get started. Also, tell me if you have snow. I want to know where all the snow exists. I'm hoping we get some later this week. Yay, I heard. I talked to someone, I was talking to someone in Ashgash today, and they said that uh, y'all had snow up there. Exciting. I mean, normal for you, exciting for us down here in the central Midwest. <laughs> Welcome, Shannon. Gina, of course you have snow, it's gorgeous. It's a Hallmark movie there. Ah, Stephanie, welcome. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Kristen. Sammy. Okay. All right, let's get started. Okay, so quick introductions for those of you that don't know who we are. Um, I am Jamie Case, one of the co-founders of Project Bella and the Shelter Slumber Party. Joining along is Laura Nelson, my co-founder of Project Bella and the Shelter Slumber Party. And then we also have Sarah Wink with us, and she is with Mighty Cause, um, our platform that we use for this um, for this event. And we have used Mighty Cause for, hmm, I don't even know, so many years, um, lots of years, since like 2018, I think we've been using Mighty Cause for this event. Um, so it's really fun to kind of see it go to the next level with Mighty Cause and have our own um, giving, giving event, full giving event. Um, so Sarah's going to walk us through a bit today, and we'll go over kind of what we're going to do. Um, we'll talk through what the next steps are. Um, can you guys throw in the chat if you've officially registered on the Mighty Cause platform yet, just so that we can get an idea of who's who's actually on the call? Um, so you've officially like got the link from me, said yes, you registered, uh, went through the process, and got all registered. Beautiful, great. I see them coming in. That's great. Um, so we're gonna talk through um, next steps, what we're doing next. Um, we'll go through the oh, an overview of the platform. Um, just to show you around and where everything's located and how we do the next things that we need to do. Um, creating your pages, Laura's going to talk us through why and how this event is set up just so that um, you all have a, a better understanding of kind of the hierarchy of, of how the, the platform is set up. Um, and then other support options for you um, and what we have available to help you through the many, many questions that you either have and haven't asked yet or have and have asked, um, or you will ask at some point. Um, so we'll give you some kind of self-serving tools and then obviously you can reach out to us anytime. All right, I'm gonna turn it over to Laura to take us away on the details. Yes, hello, thanks guys for joining. So it's January already, which is crazy, which means the potty is four months away. Um, so I just wanted to spend a few minutes just to hit a couple of the things that we, um, if you're participating, that we hope that you can start um, crossing off the list for January. So first and foremost, like Jamie mentioned, is to officially register for the potty. There's a QR code down at the bottom of the screen. Um, Registration to open the full month of January. It'll close on February 2nd. Um, that And we do that just so that way everybody has enough time to really plan and have a successful uh, potty. Once you uh, register um, and your registration is approved and all is well, you'll get an email back from us that has um, a link to our resource hub. So this is a 
website that has a lot of resources on it. It also it's where we'll have been we are putting the recordings to all these webinars. It's got templates. It's got a lot of stuff, and we try to keep that updated. Um, so that will be something you'll want to bookmark and reference back many, many, many times. Um, and then in that email also we'll have these next steps of uh, time to get moving. So to set up your organization's profile page, which we'll talk about in depth today. Um, now's the time if you haven't already to start building and pulling together your individual organization's event planning team. Um, while this isn't a heavy lift of an event, you we recommend not doing it all yourself. Um, and so pulling from staff and volunteers and uh, there's a resource on the hub that kind of outlines the different like team members we you could have um, that would make it uh, the most successful party and that make you not pull your hair out. And now it's never too early to start uh, recruiting participants. So these would be the individuals who will be spending the 24 hours at your um, shelter, who will be doing the fundraising. Um, and also soliciting sponsors. Again, it's never too early. There are resources for both of those things on the resource hub. And we will be doing our next webinar, which we'll talk about at the end of uh, today on recruiting participants. We know that sometimes this can be um, challenging to how to explain it to people, um, how so they're not like concerned and, and kind of troubleshoot. So that will be our next uh webinar that we'll be having. So more to come on that. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're hoping that you guys can start doing in January. Um, and then and we'll step you through month by month. Like uh, On the resource hub, there is an event timeline where it has month by month that the items that you can check off your list. So that's January. Um, but today we really wanted to spend some time, re, you know, going through the Mighty Cause platform. Like Jamie said, we've used it for years and years and we love it. Um, but we know that new technology or new platform can be confusing or intimidating. So spending a little bit of time walking you through these things in, in real person, in real life and having Sarah give you a tour, uh, we think would be super helpful. And just a reminder, as we go through these things, everything that I'm about to talk about or that Sarah shows you, there are resources on the hub that give you in print with screenshots step-by-step <laughs> -step to do all of these things. So you will also have uh, a reference to go back to as you, um, as you create your pages. And speaking of pages, um, we wanted to start here. Um, there was some, there's been some confusion in the past about the three types of pages uh, that we that are on the Mighty Cause platform, and we reference these pages quite a bit, not just in these webinars, but also in the resources. So we just wanted to start with these so that so that way you have a solid understanding early on, because it can be a smidge confusion confusing. Um, so there are three types of pages uh, for each organization on the on the Mighty Cause platform. There's the organization profile page, the slumber party event page, which is the most important, um, and then the slumber party fundraising pages or the individual fundraising pages. And we're going to go through these one by one so that way you understand what they are. So the organization profile page. So this is the hub of all of your presence on the Mighty Cause platform. So what, how I like to think about this is this is a general page about your organization. And so that's why we ask you to set this up first once you've registered. And so you kind of think of this page as just like a mini web page that tells um, visitors and users a little bit more about your organization, your mission, your programs, whatever you want it to be. And this is available um, so that way visitors can learn more about your org if they don't know a lot about you yet. Um, and uh, so they can, and that way they don't, you don't have to muddle it with the slumber party language. Um, once this page is set up, and this is why we have you do it first, once you set this up, I, I just like to say set it and forget it. Like one, this is just a general page, it's set up and then you can move on because the what you will be spending all of your time working off of is the next page, which is the slumber party event page. And I wanna, so, let me, let me pause for just one second. 
and yeah. say that or reiterate that that org page because I'm talking about it in the chat with Shannon that once your org page is set up so you've set it up if you participated last year you set it up last year so that page is good to go you don't have to do anything it's tied to your EIN there's nothing else that you have to do unless you feel like you need to update it at all so that's the only way that you're going back in and touching that order page correct yes and if you've used mighty cause for any other fundraising outside of the slumber party because like I know a lot of awards use it because it's so amazing um for different other you know campaigns you are your org page is already set up so again you could go and and refresh um if it had any kind of like timely things but otherwise you don't have to worry about it okay so the event page is how we always tend to reference it so just when you, from here on out when we say the event page so this is your main shelter slumber party page and the one that you will be sharing externally like on social media and be driving your supporters to this is the page that where you will add event sponsor logos add offline donations add matches um, once it's created, this is essentially where you'll be doing all of your work moving forward for the shelter slumber party. Um, as you can kind of see in the screenshot, this will have a running total once fundraising opens of how much you've raised. A little bit further down on the page is where there's like a leaderboard of all your individual uh, fundraisers. So this is it. This is the page. Um, uh, anything to add, Jamie and Sarah? I'm just answering the chat. So the, this slumber party event page is the is one of the pages that needs to be. This is new every year. So there is a when you register, you will create a 2024 slumber party event page. In 2025, you will create a 2025 slumber party event page. But that org page up here stays the same. That's always in there. But every year we'll send you a new registration link where you'll register for this year's event. So this year's event page will need to be set up again for this year's event. Does that make sense, Shannon? Give it a thumbs up in the chat. <laughs> and if anybody else have the same question. Okay, great. And then the third page are the um, individual fundraising pages. So these are the pages that your participants will create themselves and that they will, you know, share with their friends and family. Participants will be able to like customize these pages, like add their own photos, tell the story of why they're supporting your organization, what they're excited about, what have you. And then it will, by doing that, they have a direct link to their individual fundraisers that they can post on social media and share with, you know, their mom and whatnot. And then the totals from these pages is what feeds it up back into your event page totals. So again, to kind of reiterate, you have your organization page, which is general, that's not tied specifically to anything. It's just general stuff about you. This shelter slumber party event page for 2024, and then the individual multiple, hopefully, uh, fundraising pages with your participants. So the next question in the chat is on my event page, is that the join this event button to get the fundraising pages set up? The answer is yes. It, it can be on the event page, but you can also, and uh, Sarah will talk about that because she's going to go through all these pages and how to set them up here momentarily. She's going to talk about how you can email your participants directly to invite them to set up a page under your event so you, they don't have to go find it themselves. You can just, just email them directly and say, click on this link and set up your page. Yes, Aaron. Um, well, we can throw the registration in the chat as well, but if you don't, if you need it, yes, email us and we'll send it to you. Yeah, I can go find the rich. I can get that link too, because I'm about to uh, pass it off to Sarah, who's going to do a little tour on the back end. So for those who don't know Mighty Cause very well, once you register, 
where you know the organization dashboard how to set up your org page how to set up your event page and how to invite participants so take my turn um hello everyone so i'm sarah i'm the project manager on mighty cause side um and i think being able to show you kind of the walkthrough of these kind of sections from start to finish is really going to help also clarify any questions um, so I'm going to escape out of this and bring you to first I'm going to bring you to the actual shelter slumber party. Can you see my screen? Okay, still sharing. Yeah. Okay. So first I'm going to bring you to the actual shelter slumber party event page. Um, this is, you know, the actual giving event page itself. Um, but you will always want to come to this page when you're going to log into your organization and your event page. Um, so you'll click login at the top right corner. You'll be presented with either the email that you used, the admin email that's attached to your org page, um, the one you used to register with, uh, or you can use your Google or Facebook. Um, so this is where you're always going to go. You're going to want to make sure you always see sheltersummerparty.com in your URL when you're on your event page and your org page that tells you you're in the right spot. Um, okay, so then once you're logged in, um, you'll see eventually uh like when you log in you'll see your little you know icon and your name and you'll click here and it'll hover and it'll show you your organization page so i'm going to pop over to our demo site to kind of show you what that looks like um so your uh organization page uh like laura and jamie are saying this is basically the background um on the platform so this is you know where you're getting your disbursements sent to um this is like all of that kind of technical stuff uh like who's an admin who's allowed to like access the donor data stuff like that that's where you'll come for you know to set up those pieces um but this is your uh organization page itself when you first come here you'll see an overview screen um from your overview screen you can see that you're registered for this year's event it'll say something like your organization is registered for registered for shelter slumber party 2024 or maybe it'll say it's pending if the team is in review uh, once you're registered, it'll say, you know, of course, that you're registered, uh, but this is kind of like a snapshot of just different data and this is customizable to you. You will only be able to see your organization page if you are an approved admin of your organization. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If you are brand new this year and you are registering your organization, you have not previously participated um, and you don't, you know, have access to an organization page yet. Our Mighty Cause support team goes through and also approves your admin request, which is an all in one as part of the registration form. So you don't need to do anything in particular. If you're new this year, you're just going to go ahead, uh, you know, obviously create like an email account attached to Shelter Summer Party, but then you'll just go through the process, fill out the registration form. Um, and then all in one, our support team will also get a notification that this new person is an admin requesting. Um, and so it usually takes between two to three business days just to verify um, maybe you're using like a Gmail account instead of like a at, you know, Animal Humane Society. Sometimes that slows things down, but that's just something to keep in mind. You'll be receiving two emails, one notifying you of registration approval, and then you'll also get a separate email from Mighty Cause Support notifying you that you now have admin access and you can access your org page. Um, with that out of the way, this is what you'll see. You'll see a navigation dashboard on the left hand side, um, organization page. Uh, this is where you can go in and add, you know, your quick logo, a background image, little things like that. Um, just kind of to give you an idea of what you're doing. You don't need to do too much here because this isn't where you're fundraising. You're fundraising on the actual event page that you'll be setting up. Um, but just so you have an idea of what this looks like. Uh, it's all on page editing, so you can like just type directly on the page. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go back to what you just said because that's yeah. where I think we're gonna have confusion. Is if you go back up. So again, this is not where you're fundraising right now, so you don't have to worry too much about this dollar amount area here, um, because this is just your org page. This is not the slumber party event page. Just mm -hmm. gonna reiterate that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, but then as you scroll down, you'll just, you know, add a little bit of quick information just so it's not an empty page. Um, just showing you what it looks like. Matches will be set up on your actual event page. You don't have to worry here. 
Um, and then we have your organization data section, which maybe you do want to refresh if you were a participant last year, maybe you have a different email or phone number or an, a website update that you want to kind of link. Um, so this is all available to you to edit. Um, moving through fundraising tools is really where you'll be, you know, tinkering, uh, so to speak, if you are on your org page. And that's because this is where you can manage your campaigns for the shelter slumber party. Um, so we have fundraising tools, left-hand dashboard, campaigns, and then I'm also going to cover um, the template. So this is kind of the two areas that you'll be exploring. So campaigns is where you can see a uh, quick view, any active campaigns. These are including campaigns uh, last year. So if you had individuals who participated and slept at your shelter last year, say they're not participating this year, that's something you'll want to go through your campaigns dashboard and just clean it up a little bit. Um, you can see, you know, if there's an old fundraiser, they're not participating this year, you'll want to toggle that discoverability so that page is hidden and it's not going to show up in the actual shelter slumber party search. So just go through and do a little housekeeping um, if you were a previous participant last year. Um, or maybe you use, you know, Mighty Cause year round and you have some fundraisers that you just want to hide because they're not relevant during this year, this um, Silver Potty campaign, you can hide those as well. Uh, but this also gives you just kind of some quick view data, like who is the owner of a page, whether it's an admin or an actual peer to peer participant, kind of supporter, when they created the page, just kind of stuff like that. Um, back to your fundraising tools, I also want to mention fundraiser templates and I have slides on this, so you'll have to bear with me because I took some beautiful screenshots, but I also want to show it. Um, your fundraiser template is going to be something you also want to build that happens on the back end here in your organization section. Um, this just makes everything so much easier for your participants when you're onboarding them. Um, and I'm sure Laura and Jamie have you know information for you all to work through this uh, in time. But this is where you go to set up that fundraiser template. Um, you get access to one fundraiser template um, just be, by being a part of Shelter Summer Party. So you can see if you already had one last year, maybe you want to go in, you want to edit it, um, you want to edit that template. Maybe you have 2023 in last year and you want to make it 2024. So you can go through and edit your existing template. Um, and then if you are, let me go back. Uh, if you're brand new, then you'll just click create and it'll allow you to fill in, pre-fill some of that content. It just makes it easier for your participants. They're not starting from a blank page. They have, you know, all of the information that you want them to have on their individual fundraising pages kind of pre-filled out. So these are those two sections under fundraising tools. Um, reporting is a good go to. You can just view all of the donations that are coming in during your event. You can also do this on directly through the event. Uh, page that you're going to create itself, but this is also here for you as well, if you wanted to look at last year's data or compare or you want to look up a certain donor name really quickly, you can do that directly through your um, dashboard reporting. Um, disbursement information once it's time for disbursements, uh, you can you know download full disbursement reports as well. Um, retained donors, that's something you might also want to work into your strategy. If you participated last year, you can quickly see which donors gave um, during last year's 2023 campaign, but haven't given during this year's campaign, um, and come up with a strategy to email them, let them know that the event is happening, and where they should donate uh, during the day. Um, let's see, after reporting, working our way down, um, most of this you don't need to really do anything to. Uh, I will probably say if you would like, you can add some additional language to the donation receipt. So everyone's going to be sent an automatic receipt via Mighty Cause, um, thanking them and letting them know that their gift has been made. But it is also really nice for you to add a custom message just from your organizations uh, reiterating the thanks. So you can add that here. Um, um, additionally, settings, this is a good place to just kind of check through, um, make sure, you know, just in general, everything is looking right. Um, this is where you can add additional admins. So if you wanted to add, you know, a couple different people who are working with you, uh, these, anyone who is added as an admin has access to donor data. That's just something to keep in mind. 
So whoever you're adding, just make sure that you're comfortable with them being able to see that information. Um, but that is your organization kind of dashboard in a nutshell. Hey, Sarah. Yeah. A couple of questions while you're here, we should could you could just answer in real time. And I the one I want to clarify for the fundraising template, the goal you put in there is just for individual, not the overall goal for the whole organization, correct? Correct. Yeah. And the so when you um pull it up. So when you do enter a goal, anything you input here isn't like permanent. So if a if they a, can change if, it if yeah. they want to. Okay. Yeah, so you can change this, they can change this, but this is just specific to the individual. And can you also go to where they would set up their disbursements again? Yes, uh, let's see, settings. Is it, I figured it was. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's just under settings and then disbursement settings. And typically, it's probably already set up from last year if you already participated. And then this year, it would be set up um, when you, you know, get your account set up. And it's usually under your mailing address, but you have the option to switch directly to EFT. So if you wanted to do payouts with EFT directly to your bank account, um, you can also set that up early. Um, and that would avoid that $5 check fee that happens with each check disbursement. Who is the payment processor that Mighty Cows uses? Um, so we use our own payment processor. So we, yeah, it goes to the Mighty Cows Charitable Foundation, which is a DAF. Thank you. Any other questions before I switch back to the slide deck? Does everybody understand the fundraiser template and how it's just a template, which is like really, and I'm sorry, I was like answering chat and like wasn't fully paying attention to what you were saying about it. But um, understanding that, like, this helps you maintain some consistency throughout your team as well. So um, if you if if there's a certain goal you have in mind, if there's um, a certain way you want everybody to market this and call it the same thing, this is a good way to give them some of that guidance as well. Any other questions while I switch back? Um, okay, so uh, I'll go through this quickly since I pretty much already showed it to you. But um, when you are ready, and I know Laura has information and kind of a cadence that you'll all be following to get set up this year, um, but to set up your actual event, which is where you are going to direct people to make gifts to for the event, for the giving event, um, I'll just call it the giving day so that we're not using event twice. But when you're ready to set up your event page for the giving day, you'll go to your campaigns dashboard and then you'll click create the little plus sign. Um, it'll bring you to a pop-up page and you'll click events and it will take you through the process to get that event page set up for fundraising this year. Um, once you have your event set up, it's going to bring you to the actual event and it's kind of, you know, a templated style so you can start to fill in the pieces. Uh, there's a place for your logo, you can title your shelter slumber party event, you can edit the background. Um, this is where you'll be setting your goal. So if you have, you know, a certain amount of dollars you want to raise, you can set that here. Um, but your dashboard looks very similar. It has kind of, you know, the same kind of flow on the left hand side. Each one of these buttons will show you different editable sections, um, funding goal, uh, your story. That's just kind of like you're about, like what you're fundraising for specifically. This is where you'll also add your sponsors for this year's event. So if you have, you know, someone who's kind enough and generous enough to support you, you'll want to highlight them here. You can add their logos link to their page, that type of thing. Um, so this is really where you're gonna be spending the bulk of your time, really kind of customizing and finessing this page, um, since this is where you'll be pointing donors. Um, then you have campaigns, participants, reports, registration, settings, uh, and don't forget to publish, I'll show you that in a second as well. Um, but the next section that I'm gonna focus on is settings. Uh, these are kind of our recommended settings for you all. Um, 
what the, the individual who was asking the question about where you see join this event, you see that text on that button because your event is currently set for anyone can join. So by switching that to event invite only, no one will see that join this event button anymore. They'll have to be individually invited, which is probably a good thing because you want to know specifically who is going to be participating. These are people who are actually sleeping at the shelter, most likely, you know. So you'll want to toggle that to invite only. Um, you can start to customize your social sharing settings. Um, that's, you know, what people see when they click share to socials. Um, you can customize the URL for this year's event. So if you want it to be similar to last year's, but maybe 2024, you can do that. Um, and then working through this, uh, your page metrics, your progress calculation start time you'll need to set. Uh, and I put a little note here because the event uh, host is in central time. You're going to want to make sure that your progress calculation is reflective of your time zone to that central start time. So I just have um, examples here. If you're Eastern time, you'll start it at 1 a.m. because you're one hour ahead of central. Um, and then you'll also want to make sure include offline donations is toggled on in your settings so that any offline gifts that come in are reflected on your event page, which means it'll be reflected on the leaderboards. Um, you can also add specifically just admins specific to your event page. So if you have somebody who's helping you, again, these people are going to have access to donor data, so just keep that in mind. Um, so then moving through, once you have kind of worked through all of these buttons on your event dashboard, um, you'll likely be ready to publish, but I did want to show these are four things that we require you to have done before you publish. Um, that means making sure you have your logo, making sure you have some information filled out about what you're fundraising for, um, filling out your organizer info, and then just making sure you have a goal added to your event page. And then you can click that fun little rocket ship and publish your page. Um, questions? Feel free to jump in. Um, but I'll keep going. So adding offline donations, this is where you're going to also add your offline gifts that come in. So if you have, you know, cash checks, things like that, that are being given to your uh, specifically for your event fundraiser, you will want to log them directly onto your event page so that that dollar amount adds to your goal bar and gets reflected onto the leaderboards. Um, so adding the donation is really pretty simple. You're just gonna go to reports and then click that little add offline gift. A little window will pop up and you can input any of the data that you need. Um, donor names, this is just tracking for you so that post event, you know, you have that information, you have a log of who made an offline gift, and then you can do follow up yourself manually. Uh, when you add like an, um, an email, they're not going to be notified of their gift or thanked for their gift. So that's just something to keep in mind. This is solely for tracking purposes. There's no communications being auto sent to anybody who's making an offline gift. Um, and then your events page is also where you're going to want to manage uh, any matching gifts that you, you know, you've uh, set up for the event. So you'll go to reports, matching grants, um, and from here you'll see a nice little dashboard display of live matches, upcoming matches, and then any past matches. Um, you can easily create a match by just clicking the little plus sign create. It'll pop up with this little kind of modal that allows you to input all of the data, I mean, the information, um, like the time, start time, end time. There's just a bunch of different parameters that we allow you to make your matches really flexible. Um, you can always just keep it a one-to-one -one match. I think that's the most popular just in general. But if you do want more information, maybe you did matches last year and you're looking to get them a little more you know, creative or intricate with them, you can always look at the resources that we have available for matches, and it'll walk you through kind of what each of these settings means. Um, we also have, just as a call out, when you see a little question mark with a gray bubble, that means that we have uh, support articles on that topic available. So you can click this, and then you'll see instantly different support articles related to matching grants, frequently asked questions. 
uh, we try to make it just as easy and helpful as possible for you to, you know, get your matches and just in general, everything set up. Um, one thing to note, you can make edits to your matches so long as it is not closed and considered a past match. So that's just something to keep in mind. Once a match closes, you can no longer make edits to it. Um, next thing you kind of have a, you know, a, a full grasp on all of the settings. You've got everything ready, your logo's added, so you're ready to start to invite your participants. Um, on your participants dashboard, you'll be able to go in uh, and click the plus sign and then you can invite new event members. So these are people that you want to set up an individual fundraiser page uh, for your shelter event. Um, and you can see kind of what that looks like. You can enter their you know, email addresses and just send out the invites. Uh, and it will prompt them to click a button and start uh, filling out like the, the fundraiser template that you've created. Um, moving into those individual fundraising pages, uh, we already kind of went through this, but on your organization page under fundraising tools, that's where you're going to access your fundraiser template and either make edits to last year's template or create a new one if you're a brand new participant this year. So I won't spend too much time on this since we already covered it, um, but some kind of things to keep in mind for individual fundraiser pages. Um, these are pages for people who are actually fundraising at your location. You're gonna have them set up an individual fundraiser page. This is the page link that they are going to be sharing with their own supporters. So maybe, you know, they'll share their own individual fundraising page link with like friends, family, Facebook, Instagram, wherever they want to promote. Um, and these pages, while we call them individual fundraisers, multiple people can be you know using the same page link so if you have two people who want to fundraise together um and they plan on staying at your shelter together they don't need to set up individual pages they can both set up one page and share the same link to all of their community um these pages are also the ones that will be listed on your leaderboard on your event page um and uh yeah, this is just kind of, they get to fill out any information. They'll have their own kind of donor wall uh, and, and a link. So it gives them some autonomy, which is really nice. Uh, questions on anything that I showed? Or else I'll pass it back to you all for resources and support. Yes, thank you, Sarah. That was very helpful. And I actually thought I knew everything, but I actually learned a couple <laughs> Always, always good, always good. So I'm glad I got to attend. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted, we wanted to um, mention the many resources again that are available because um, we are here to help. So for um, Shelter Slumber Party support, there's obviously the resource hub where like we've mentioned, um, there are quite a few uh, resources, checklists, templates, what have you. Um, I did wanna say that if there is something that you um, want help with, can't find it on the resource hub, please reach out to let us know at help at projectbella.org. We're, you know, building these support that services and there's, we may not have thought of something. So we're always happy to uh, not only answer your question, but, you know, create additional resources so that, because if you have the question, somebody else probably does as well. Um, like I said, you can always email us, uh, Jamie or I will get that email and respond. And um, we're also available as time goes on to chat with you one-on-one -on -one. if it can't really be explained or answered you know, via email. We're always happy to jump on a quick call with you to step you through these things. Um, and then also just a plug, we will have uh, two more webinars before the event um, and we'll be sending uh, invites with those soon, uh, but just to save the date. So we know that participant recruitment can um, sometimes be challenging. So we are going to have a, what we're calling a workshop um, in a few weeks on February 7th at 2 p.m. Central, where we will, you know, talk you through some ideas, some troubleshooting. We're hoping to get some of our um, Slumba Potty veterans uh, to join us and share their tips and tricks for getting um, participants. 
And then um, about three weeks before the event starts, we'll have another webinar on what we like to call run of show planning. So that we'll be talking about uh, planning what uh, those 24 hours um, and having a plan going in. And so that way, um, because it gets a little fun, a little crazy, a little distracting in those 24 hours. So it's really helpful to have a, a plan. So we'll be uh, talking about those two upcoming as well. And like I said, invites for those so you guys can register for those webinars are forthcoming. I'll be sending those with the recording to this webinar here probably by the end of the week. And then as Sarah's mentioned too, Mighty Cause has a vast online support library for all of those things. Um, that you can access uh, on, at support.monicas.com. Um, but they also have, if there's any weird technical questions, they do have a technical support team available throughout the week. Sometimes if you like email Jamie or I and it's above our head, <laughs> which happens sometimes, we may kick you over to their technical support because we're not we can't answer all the things or sometimes it's like a technical thing that we can't fix on the back end and they and they can which is nice and so questions i know jamie it looks like there's one in the chat that you want to answer live yeah so um kristen's asking about donations and when they can come in um for the individual pages versus event pages and things like that so because this event is, um, and, and let me back up and say that the work, there's a lot of information being thrown at you right now. There's a lot of information in the hub. Your first year probably feels quite disorienting and like there's a lot of things to do. And I'll tell you that like in year two, you're going to be like, did it, done it, got it. I might want to read a little bit more on that thing because I feel like we could do that part better. It's going to feel so much more smooth next year for you all. Um, as you are setting up and recruiting participants and doing all those things that feel daunting right now. Um, because of that, and because this organization, this group, this um, event has grown so large in just the past year, even, we're trying to step everyone through and creating some really strict timelines um, to do each step of the way. So it doesn't feel so over. Um, tasking. Um, we know that there are certain times you want to do certain things and parts of this process. So that's why we're doing these things kind of um, really systematically. So registration being in January, participant recruitment um, next. So we're we're trying to keep everybody together. And I know it's exciting. You, some people want to be really anxious and like do the next thing. And you can start thinking about those for sure. Read the resources, do the things. Um, but uh, if everybody's moving along at different paces, it's hard because we're like, we don't get paid for this. This is our, uh, our work of passion. So, uh, it's easier if we can kind of move everybody along at the same time. That being said, uh, we have donations set up at certain times as well. So we have, um, I don't think any organization, well, let me go back. Let me, let me back into it via the actual event timeline. And Laura, you're going to have to help me with the dates because I know you know them better than me. So the event is April 6th. So the 24 hours of the event are April 6th to April 7th. Um, we open up your individuals will fundraise two weeks, three weeks prior to that. Sorry. Um, March, Mar that Mar that. March 15th. March 15th is the date that, fun that your fundraisers can your individuals, the people participating or yourself or whatever it is, can start accepting donations for this event. So we're giving you three weeks ahead of the event to start fundraising for all those reasons, like you're saying, Kristen, that is when you're going to start reaching out and saying, hey, I'm doing this really cool thing. Give me money. What we've seen is that about 50% of the money is raised in those three weeks prior to the event. The other 50% of the money raised for your organization, the event as a whole, your individuals, is raised during the 24 hours. So if we give you too much time in the beginning, it loses its like enthusiasm and oomph. And if we don't give you enough, sometimes you're feeling like your participants are like you're trying to bring them along and get them updated quickly before the event starts. So three weeks we feel we feel is the magic sweet spot. 
your organization then, so you're asking if your organization can receive funds. That answer is no, correct? Sarah, you're turning off, you're, there is no fundraising on the shelter slumber party until what date? March. Um, so I am manually turning it on at midnight on the 15th. So right now, if someone goes to click donate on your shelter summer party page, it'll say uh, donations are not accept like being accepted right now. Please return March 15th to make your gift. So there are a few reasons you don't want to also shift them to another place. Like I really encourage you to stay within those that, that timeline of three weeks. And there are um, a few reasons why you, you just don't want to and don't even tell your people. And that's why we're also moving you along in this timeline so that you're ta we're gonna tell you when you need to, like your, your participants need to start doing the things that they're doing. Because we know that participants get excited and they get their page set up and then they wanna start raising money. But what happens is if the donations aren't all turned on, it's going to different places like your your organization, which is not counted towards the shelter slumber party. Now, let me tell you why that's important. Um, the, the counting towards the shelter slumber party is important because it doesn't roll up to your totals, right? So when at the end of this, if you give yourself a $40,000 goal and you have a rogue participant who got real excited and they've raised $5,000 on their own and it's going to your org page, we can't get that over to your boundaries, your, 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 your shelter slumber party event page. So let's like, we don't even want to go there. We want you to just, your, everybody to stay within the parameters um, for your totals to be correct, because there's also friendly competition and your and prizes. And yes, and I was going to get to that. And then there's prizes. So at certain times, there will be certain prizes that are offered. Most donations during this week, before um, most number of number of donations, there's things that we are going to be helping you incentivize your people with. Um, but but if the fundraising is done before all of that, you guys don't get to participate in those things. So those are those are some of the reasons why it's important to just like stick with the timelines that we're we're giving you um, and encouraging your participants to do the same because again they will get excited and you will have that one participant that's like. Well, it's started raising money and it's going towards the organization. And then there's not much we can do about that. That's my soapbox. Yes, Marcus, good question. Um, we have had about 180 organizations slash shelters interested in the event. We have since um, registration opened on Friday at 11 a.m. Um, what did you tell me this morning? 20 at 30. 30 organizations registered. Um, we had 41 officially last year participate in the event, but I anticipate way more this year. Um, I think those 40 will return and then there's a whole lot more that are new this year. Um, so yes, and we will have some press releases in the hub that you'll be able to utilize. Um, Soon we will have kind of a, we'll have a Facebook group that you all will be able to start talking in um, and asking some of those questions so that we can be, as we're going, really um, answering those questions real time. Um, offline donations. Yes. Are you asking? Sarah, for offline donations, can they do those early before fundraising or no? Does it matter? Um. Um, I mean, I would probably wait and just log everything at once, but I mean, technically we don't, we don't disable off adding that because that's just like a data. It's just like internal right. data. But would it go towards the total for the slumber party if yes. fundraising hasn't officially started? Um, yes, I believe. Yeah, right. I believe so because I mean, they're logging yeah. it. It's going to show on their page. The only thing that's totally disabled is online donations right now. Um, and the prizes, though, are online donations. They yeah. are not, like, you can't hold a bunch of offline donations and then enter them all in when we're having a prize hour or week or whatever it is and, and have that count. So the, the goal, the point is because you want your participants, like, the beauty of this event is that other people are raising money for you. So you want to be offering them, your other people, 
helping you, you know, giving them incentives so that you're like, hey, right now there's a power hour or it's a big week. Like ask all your friends and family. Um, okay, another question. One more question. And I delete participants like myself who was playing around in there. And I just want to redo my personal mm -hmm. fundraising page to use the template I haven't made yet. <laughs> So they're in charge of all their participants, correct? Yeah, they can delete a participant or hide it. Which would you recommend, Sarah? Should she just delete it and start over or just hide it? Um, if you, I mean, if you just want to like, the, you don't have to like create a template and then use the template. Like you can just fill in. Like I wouldn't recommend just deleting something and then redoing it necessarily because all you're, you know, all you want to do is add like that title. Technically you can, you can just remove it. It's just an added step for you. Other questions? Mm. Oh my God, there's a QA. I forgot. I didn't even, I wasn't even checking the QA. Jenny, you're on top of it. Oh, um, there's a, oh fancy. I didn't even look either. <laughs> um, okay, Jenny, uh, does this apply to, you asked this a while ago, I feel like. Does this apply to event sponsorships? We would like to do, does what apply to an event sponsorship? Probably that probably the offline donation adding them to the event page. I'm assuming that's probably where she was going with that. Because that seems to be what we were talking about. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, so yes, uh, essentially event sponsorships are offline donations, right? It's the same thing because most of the time event sponsors aren't gonna want to you know, do an online credit card thing, they're probably just going to hand you a check um, or do a direct thing that way. So I would wait until fundraising starts, but it, while you're setting up your event page, if you already have sponsorships, you can add the low, I would definitely add the logos as you're building on your event page. And then you can just add them as an offline donation. We would like to do shirts and add sponsors name to the back. So three weeks prior to the event would be hard. Gotcha. Um, I, I mean, I'm not, like, you can still take, collect that money from the sponsor and their logo and get the t-shirts going and what have you. And then when fundraising starts, when you start promoting it, you add that offline donation and the logo is already on the event page. So everybody's seeing that all at the same time with kickoff. So like, if I was your sponsor, I would go to your event page and I'd see my logo and know that the money was incorporated as soon as like, yeah, fundraising starts. Because you won't be sharing your event page until fundraising starts anyway, really, because there's really no reason to, because they know, uh, like, the public can't do anything with it necessarily. So, um, so I think as a sponsor, I'd be cool with that as long as when I logged on, I got to see my logo. Yeah, and I think you're ahead of the game too, Jenny. And, Absolutely. and the other thing I don't, I want to... Um, and and you all will learn this that are new, but don't overcomplicate things. Um, you the urge is there because it is such a neat event to like do all the things and like lots of things and and you just don't need to. And that again is the beauty of the event is it's very um, the shtick. The thing is that people are sleeping in kennels, and that's all the general donating public honestly really cares about. Um, is that they're they're a part of this really interesting, neat, different thing that's happening. Um, so we've had shelters have parties and invite the public in and do big adoption events and different things like that. And you can, but you don't. Absolutely. Not necessarily, not, you don't have, don't feel like you're not doing the event justice if you're not doing those things. The, the first year we literally, it was us in kennels and we didn't do anything. Like it was, and we, we asked some people for some sponsors and that was it. And we raised over $30,000 for a shelter that's never raised that much money in a single event. So it was, um, you really don't, don't, don't burn yourself out trying to overcomplicate. You don't need to. You, the, the key is the participants. That's where you want to spend your energy right now is thinking about the people in your community and your supporters that have a decent following and network. Some influencers if you can do that. What other questions? The sun is out, so I don't think it's going to snow here today.
Okay. Um, everybody got the link to the hub. Everybody yeah, I will send a follow up email later this week that will have the recording. Obviously, we'll add the recording to the and the slides to the hub as well. Um, there'll be an invite to the next webinar slash workshop, and obviously there'll be a reminder to for those who haven't registered and. And there will be reminder emails going out throughout this entire process, especially once you're registered to remind you, don't forget, set up your event page we, or don't forget, you know, so you'll be getting those reminders too. And yes, at least anybody can join these webinars, please bring, bring everyone. Um, so the, again, the takeaway today is get your organization's page, profile page completed. And the general, yes. And yeah. register if you haven't. Yeah, register, get your organization's page uh, put together, and then um, start building your, pulling together your team of people. So all those people you want on the webinars, like start pulling them together to, to start planning your party. Okay. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Sarah, for stepping us through. It's so nice to have the expert. <laughs> yeah, really excited for this year's event. Yeah, us too. All right, everyone. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.